burning the flash out there. The rupture comes through. Rupture didn't land, and now Fnatic in trouble because Taipei Assassins turned in the aggression on Toys taking down very low. The ignite running and rated very low. And rated goes down first blood for BB is a dog. Stanley also taking down very low. Soas taking down very low. They turn it back around. They're on towards BB. PK trying to put the damage down, but it's Taipei Assassins that come out on top despite the fact they had two members exceedingly low. They pick up the kill, and more importantly, they pick up the kill on that AD carry who is backing off to buy. Oh, that was just so unfortunate. They managed to miss a lot of those crowd controls together. They had Blitzcrank into Zyra into Cho'Gath, and they didn't land them all together. They didn't pick out Mistake. But on the flip side of that, you saw an amazing Counter-Strike come in from Stanley. Actually ghosted to get over there in time to land that stun and give the first blood. Oh, and the first blood went to BB. That's the scary thing. Yeah, and that is a scary thing. You can see Longsword picked up. There is going to be no lane switch, so standard lanes. Duos will be on the bottom there, N-rated, warding out the tri-bush. The golem's being picked up by Taipei Assassins. The wolves being picked up by Taipei Assassins. It's going to be the jungler starting off here at Wolves and Blue. Looking like a similar situation for Fnatic. So mirrors in the jungle. And Taipei Assassins have the advantage. All right, and we see how this pans out now. Pekka making his way over to the mid lane. He's down a potion, unfortunately. And that's one of the things that is a drawback when you get in that level one fight. You tend to fall just a little bit behind because uh, you, you check out those potions. We're seeing golems being taken on both sides. Lowballs picks one up for himself. Smites being used, etc. So, yeah, no crazy moves just yet after that level one. No crazy moves, everyone. Just calming down back to normality. So mid lane, Toys versus PK. We're seeing it on our screens. Diana versus Zyra. How do you rate this one? So Diana with the slight experience advantage and, and super, super minor gold advantage, I think has an early edge here. She's going to hit level break points first and, and occasionally be able to bully with that slight advantage here. However, it's still melee versus ranged. Pekka in general should win this matchup early on until jungle ganks show up. So the jungle ganks at the moment, the junglers both picking up red, pretty much a mirror across the board between those two. Top lane, Jax versus Yorick, Soas versus Stanley. Strong fight, they had a strong battle in the first one. How do you manage this one? Well, right here, I think, you know, with York not being the pick for the one versus two, to me that says Fnatic believes it's a counter pick for Jax specifically. And they're going to run him and actually sign a rating off the wings. Will they get a gank here? The rupture comes straight there on Stanley. He has managed to get the counter strike off, but they both avoided the damage from that counter strike. So as it's thinking of going in there, but they do not want to do it. Diving a Jax that early is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Yeah, they ran out of crowd control there, and unfortunately, so has tanked some turret shots. Little Ball's finding Cyanide, though. Cyanide does not have good tools for getting away from this. And that Cyanide's going to turn it. He wants to fight it because he's got Soaz coming in. There's the Ghoul going down. They get the slowdown. He's got a double buff. They want to try and give it across to Soaz, but you can see the rupture lands once again. Soaz will go down. The question is, it's Soaz that picks it up. A double buff turn around. Stanley going to go towards Cyanide. Cyanide trying to avoid it. He gets taken down. It's a double buff back and forth. Cyanide versus Stanley. Who has the most damage? He's got a lot of ghouls coming across. The two middle laners also tried to join the fight, but they couldn't get across there. But that's a strong top lane now, both with oh double buffs. Uh, I think that actually gets better for Soaz, honestly, because infinite mana for ghouls is really, really, really useful. And as far as having jungle buffs, or um, as far as the junglers are concerned, Shogath, I think, is a better zero buff jungler than Olaf is. Olaf's going to use his abilities much more. So I think Fnatic came out better for that trade. The difference is here that Cyanide's gone back. He didn't manage to buy anything. He's just come straight out. But you can see the regrowth pendant being picked up by Lil Boss. So Lil Boss is going to stay out in that jungle, stay out, maybe looking for ganks a little bit quicker. We are seeing that uh, Soaz may be backing off. Let's have a look down that bottom lane. We haven't managed to uh, get a glimpse of this one yet. You can see that uh, Peak Records has just gone back. He's bought himself Reckless. I've got to keep getting that one wrong. Uh, he's picked himself up a Doran's Blade and we'll see to try and counter. BB picked up that longsword so early on. Their Mystic Shots must be doing so much damage. Oh, yeah, and, and overall, I mean, you got to consider this matchup really, really good for Taipei Assassin. As I say, that mistake gets picked up. Oh, a perfect uh, whimsy there. Just keeps her from knocking her back. One more shot to go. Can he get the damage? He's now afraid of BB. And Raider trying to, to body block the Mystic shots. Not quite able oh. to. Flash comes up. That is the kill picked up, and there is Exhaust as well. And Raider, not in a happy place either. A couple shots to go. Oh, my oh, word. Wow, his health. So, so low. Great turnaround. Reckless spotting the danger immediately, though, realizing, you know, mistake. Since he got that whimsy down, as soon as he was hooked, very good skill there. Managed to react literally the second the hook comes in. Yeah, that was, that was perfect. Anything else, he would have gotten immediately condemned to the wall and dropped. 
So, meanwhile, at the top lane, standing using the counter strike on towards Soaz, but we can see that coming around the side is going to be Cyanide. Cyanide silences out, stops the leap strike away, and quickly gives the kill across to Cyanide uh, to Soaz. Sorry, and they are going to put pressure on towards this top turret. They realise the bottom to bottom lane is starting to lose out there. PK actually gathering down that bottom lane. He came down to defend it, so keeping that turret. How what is the health of that bottom turret? Did they actually push it? I'm not too sure. I don't think they have gotten too much work on it. No. You know, it's about down by a fifth. The difficulty here for Fnatic is that even though they're focusing the top lane and getting a lot done there, and shutting down Jax is nice. You can see he's now picked up a full Hosper Stone to try to catch back up in gold. Uh, but Ezreal can carry just as hard, and he's even safer than Jax is. End rated, oh my gosh, getting pushed again. He's caught out again. That mana shield's not going to last much longer. One more shot from BB. Will pick it up, and BB again going so strong. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, you can see PK has Olaf just off to the side there, pinging off. They know that he's there. And he is going to cover that one off. Little Balls with the Invade, taking away the large Wraith, taking away everything from Cyanide, trying to keep on top of things. There's one thing we learned from Season 2. Yeah. Focusing Stanley doesn't work. Well, I mean, we'll see, because certainly right now, BB is doing everything and, and is, is just wrecking phases right now. Three and zero. That first blood, of course, helping him, to be fair. But it, it, it's still, yeah, th this is going to be a game where BB... Uh, you know, we saw it last time with Xpeka where he was the man to make all the moves. This one, as uh, BB's Ezreal, I think, is a very big factor. So as being targeted to duo up the top lane, they will have enough to dive him. He's got his ultimate available if he should require it. Oh, the Ignite, is it going to be enough? Yes, he will. Stanley timed it to perfection. Down the bottom lane also, we saw that the jungler came in Cyanide, but BB and Mistake, too wise to avoid that one. 5-2 currently, a very aggressive start from the Taipei Assassins. And Xpeka trying to push out toys, you can see the experience advantage, the health advantage. This mid lane is, it's almost going its way. He's pretty much tied in minion kills, but he's putting on a lot of pressure onto the opposition. A lot of pressure. There's the rupture landing mistake. Hooked in. That's going to be a dead, dead mistake. The question is, can BB turn anything around? There is the little hat flapping away in the wind, and Reckless does pick that one up. But Reckless, 1-1-0, one, one, just 33 minions compared to a 3-0 BB. That's 48 CS. They are moving for the dragon here. This is actually really, really wise. They forced the AD carry to back. They've killed off the support. They know the top laners are heading back up to that top lane. It's a completely free dagger for them. This will basically equalize the gold, which they needed so badly. But the problem is they still don't have anything close oh. to the power level of Ezreal. Mana shield procked off there. Soaz, meanwhile, is going to get counter strikes in that top lane. Stanley absolutely bullying Soaz right now, trying to keep him around. Leap strikes back in, gets another empowering strike on towards Soaz. And Soaz having to chug through those hit points uh, health pot, sorry. PK is going to pick up a blue buff, though. That's going to get transferred across. Toys picks up the blue buff himself. Both secured for another five minutes. Yeah, so 13 minutes, 15 seconds. Both blue buffs respawning at the same time. And th this top lane, you know, you said it. Focusing Stanley doesn't work. They had gotten him down, uh, you know, a number of times. A, a little bit of gold over there to Soaz. But the difficulty is that even though he's down in minions, he's now got double buffs from getting those kills. And uh, he's just a scary sight because of that. He is a scary sight. Jack's keeping up the farm, got himself a Philo Stone as well, as has the jungler Lil Balls you've seen on your screen, picking up that red buff. Both junglers pretty much having the same timing. And the Cyanide trying his best to create things. He's got the boots and mobility, trying to zip around the map. So the GP items is going to be in favor of Lil Balls at the moment. I guess Heart of Gold will follow on that Ruby Crystal that's there at the moment. Toys in the mid lane, you can see 70 CS to 64. Slight advantage there again. Merc Treads coming out very early on from PK. And he's going to pick that up because he knows to be very, very afraid of basically a slow chain. With, with Diana able to pull him back with Moonfall and the Olaf Undertow, it's a very scary thing to be afraid of. The, the uh, gank top, though, coming in from Toys. Toys heading up towards Soaz. There's the Crescent Strike. Oh, down the bottom, actually. They're both jumping in at the same time. The ultimate used by Soaz. Which one will they target? It is the right one. And Soaz is going to get taken down in that top lane, down the bottom lane. They did manage to pick up a kill. Cyanide tried to sneak in towards that bush but immediately countered. And honestly, BB and Mistake are not to be messed with in this bottom lane currently. And now all the lanes are looking so incredibly, incredibly good. You're even seeing a minion kill lead for Toys on Diana, even though he's roamed, picked up an assist there at the top lane. Ooh. No, there's the flash from Mistake. Max that was range needed. Hook there. BB getting silenced out. The rupture just missing out on the hook. Well, that was just about on the tip of it, but Stanley beating down that turret very early on. And that's going to be... You know, it's, it's a good thing overall for him. That's... Uh, you know, he, he's winning the lane there. I mean, it doesn't look like it, right? He's down in minions, but it's, it's what I would honestly call winning the lane just because he's able to put out so much pressure. He got an early Philosopher's Stone. He's getting ganks up there all the time. He's, he's more powerful than his opposition. Just simply put, he's up 200 gold, and he's getting pressure on the turret because 
You know what? That's, that's TPA. They press all the time. They get the turrets down, and they start fighting. And they typically fight so very well that getting into those skirmishes just puts them farther ahead. The gold advantage right now, it's just over 1K. And really, it's all stacked on the AD carries. And immediately, Cyanide finds out that ward and takes out the ward there. Just as Taipei Assassins both go to stick a ward apiece back in. Now, Bush, the hook on towards Mistake. Is it going to be enough? No, because Tree Shop Barrage comes straight across. They're targeting it back on towards. And that's going to be N rated going down. Can they get on towards Records? Have they got enough to dive in before he manages to get to it? Has to use his ultimate to back away from that one. And Lil Bolt's also coming around the side now. They have a four man coming down towards the bottom. Records has to back away from this one, or he's a dead, dead man. He can gamble through. There's the rupture. Well, Ragnarok was used, but he wasn't able to follow through. And it does mean that Taipei Assassins can put the pressure on the bottom turret and expect to see this is going to be the first turret of the game falling for the Taipei Assassins. And when you look at the amount of roam coming out there from Toys, he's now shown up to the top lane once, the bottom lane once, each time it's working very well, is going to find Pekka right here. They do find him, he comes across the rupture, not quite landing though, not in the right place. Immediately it's going to be Stanley counteracting, jumps in there, tries to get the counter strike down a little bit too close to the tower. We do see N-rated overdriving back down here and they're warning to back away from this one. The Taipei Assassin's really turning on the power here. You can see the whole five-man stack of Taipei Assassin's heading straight up the mid lane. They could try and put pressure on this one. Fnatic need to react. They can see they're actually sending uh, Reckless down that bottom lane. He's going to try and clear this one out. Toys trying to steal away that large wraith, but where is BB going to end up? BB currently, Phage and a BF sword. This yep. early on, that's a dangerous territory for Fnatic. He's going he's gonna to use the Phage just to be a bigger bully in lane because he's already winning. If he gets the slow proc, he's going to be even more pressure. Uh, and he's going to go for just straight up damage at this point. It could be Eye Edge. It could be Bloodthirster. I'm not quite sure which one it's going to be. Um, but, you know, he's going to transition so very well and honestly better than Vayne will. You're seeing Reckless with just double Doran's Blade and a dagger. You're always going to see Ezreal ahead of the curve unless something catastrophic happens and feeds Reckless. But Fnatic were quick to back away from that one. Type Assassin's tried to close in, tried to do as much damage as they can. So as trying to keep the pressure on, he's got that Tyria of the Goddess. He can just keep spamming them, spamming the spells on towards Stanley. Stanley immediately reacting, trying to get back the damage on towards him. Type Assassin's now on the dragon. They realize they haven't got the two top laners. Here comes Enrated. Here comes the rest of Fnatic coming down there. The dragon. Oh, and he's going to get the hook on towards Toys. Is it going to be enough? Tries to flash away. Cyanide gets the kill down on him. They're going to walk towards the dragon. They do pick up the dragon. Cyanide getting the smite down. Reckless now chasing on towards Lil Balls. They realize this is too much. Much. Don't get greedy, just back away. Oh, that was so huge. That fight was absolutely mandatory. And as soon as I saw TPA split and Diana run down towards the pit, I was like, he needs to pull before she flashes over the wall. And it was so perfect. That was N rated landing, the rocket grab that Fnatic needed. And that was a clutch play. Clutch play keeps them within 2,000 gold. PK picking up the farm in that mid lane. So as the Stanley, they're just keeping going back and forward like two labs from Grimsby fighting over fish, which is something you do see quite often in that town, trust me. And as it is, so Stanley, you know, he's, he's building it differently from what you would normally see. You'd normally see people p rushing the Triforce. He's not yep. doing that. He's gone GP10, he's gone the Negatrons, he's got the Ninja Tabby. He's just fighting against what he's against in the lane. He's just completely counteracting Soas. And that kind of really goes to the, the TPA playstyle for him, is he's always trying to split push. He did it on Needly, he's doing it on Jax here. He's oh, fighting for the one going, oh, it's fine. Straight mistake. into the hook, and that's the power fist and mistake. Might well get caught out, uses his ultimate, and now immediately turns it around. Still hasn't been taken down there, and avoided it with a simple... Press of the R button. Yeah, the knockup completely stopped what would have been Cyanide's rupture there. He got it out a little bit too late um, and, and <laughs> missed a bunch of kills. So, so as just desperately defending that last turret. Not much hit points left on that one, unfortunately. So, Fnatic looking like they are going to lose that one eventually. Three to zero, that could make it. And the rest of Fnatic stacking up. Reckless actually spotted as he stands on a ward, which means the bottom lane, they realize they can just push because... Nobody's anywhere near it. And then just going to continue getting that free farm. Lil Balls clearing out the raids and heading across. He's going to pick up a couple of wards on his way past. Reckless now passing another ward. He could get headed off here. You can see immediately they're heading towards him. Mistake goes in there. Gets the glitter lands down on towards Reckless. Mistake 1v1 in Reckless and forcing him away. Does a little bit of damage. If he got into the fight at all, he knows BB would have shown up. So immediately all he went for is the condemn. Try to get him to the wall and just run the hack away. Reckless does need to catch up and farm. He's down 31 Top. minions. That's a really bad situation here. Top lane, you can see Soaz actually losing a lot of hit points already. Stanley just turning around. Stanley used his ultimate there, though, to keep him at bay. Lilbor's just going to clear out that ward. There we go. It's fallen.
And they're going in for the blue steel. This is so good. Taipei Assassins, you can see they just have control over the map completely. They are. They kind of come in there, tried to get the grab, but it is Toys that takes it away. Meanwhile, Cyanide comes in, clears out a ward. All right. Now, the thing here is that Zyra, uh, Pekka, he is leaning well. It was the one thing I thought was going to be the big linchpin here for Fnatic was Zyra having a good game. 121 minions is the highest in the game. With Mercury Treads and Chalice of Harmony, he's got more than enough magic resist to withstand any kind of assault here uh, from his opposition in lane, from toys, and in general in a team fight as well. Now, if you can keep that pace going and get powerful for a team fight, that's a big deal. They're collapsing in around them there. The True Shot Barrage does manage to land across the whole team. Take lives. Like, that's all I can say. Mistake lives. That was a really, really good move to get out from that. And Taipei Assassin's now looking to maybe dive on towards his top turret. They've realized they had to back away. The Taipei Assassin's pressuring on. There's not a lot of hit points on that top turret. That's going to be the third tower of the game for Taipei Assassin's. The minions will take it out. Now the rest of Taipei Assassin's starting to go for the invade immediately. The second they take that top turret, they ward up the red. They come around. They take away everything they can. Any advantage? The ultimate use they from PK there on towards Toys. A little bit wasteful. Trying to go towards Little Balls. They're split targeted. They're not sure what they want to go for. And Fnatic having to back away from this one. While this is all happening, happening down that bottom lane, BB is just farming up, farming up, and slowly but surely building up a huge advantage over Reckless. And the Bloodthirster is built. Now, Reckless, he's staying within 30 minions, which is good, because he, he started out behind, and he's staying like the same amount behind, which is difficult to do. Uh, they're almost going to find Lobos. Oh, they get the hook. They get the hook. He uses Ragnarok, tries to get away from it. It's not going to be enough. It's an Oracle burn. It's PK that picks up the kill, the first kill of the game for PK. Needs to get that going. And Reckless heads straight across to the side. The ward kill coming in as well from Cyanide. He's really the one that's creating things. And Rated managed to land them hooks. Is it going to be the same? Are they going to turn it around? They lost the lane phase oh, in game one. he's back in the mid lane, though. This is pretty risky. He's kidding low. Burns flash. Okay. Burns the flash out there. And actually, mistake. Oh, is the Ignite going to be enough? No, the regrow. Yeah, the ult oh, 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 man. True shot barrage flashing pass from b -Bay. That would have been a nice free kill for him, but it wasn't to be. Okay, so as a recap, we had a whole, of a, heck, a whole heck of a lot going in the recent time. But right now, Taipei Assassins, they still feel good. The pulls, oh, would you believe it, Toys? He's actually going to turn back on N-Rated here. He does turn around, and the Lulu ultimate gets the kill. Oh, tried to flash away a fail flash from Toys. He is not invulnerable. He can make mistakes. So as now against BB, though. So, BB just so, so strong. Records comes back in. He Arcane shifts away, realized the moment had passed. But N-Rated getting taken down, really for the fact that, look how low mistake was. Toys got in there, but he didn't do any damage straight away because the Lulu ultimate was used. He was just stood there. The mm -hmm. turret was not firing on him. Yeah, and that, and that was so useful that he could kind of sit there, tank the team, and then collect his thoughts and just go. And the amount of damage that Diana can put out in a short time is a whole heck of a lot. And they've got to be aware of that at all times. This is a very scary champion. Scary champion, scary moment for BB here. They've pinged on towards him. They realize he's coming around. The rupture goes down, gets in there. Smite comes out. Cyanide, Cyanide gets on there. Can they turn it into anything on towards BB? BB, of course, just used Arcane Shift a second ago. Cyanide, though, turning the damage on him. There he goes, gets out of it. The ultimate coming down from Zyra, but Ragnarok is enough. Can they finish him off? Yes, they do. Reckless gets in there. Standing now, taking down very low. He's already used Counter Strike. He's going to continue to get chased. Gets the lead strike onto Mistake. Fnatic have to back away. Still Still very, very close, just 3k between the two teams, 8-7 in terms of kills, but still no towers for Fnatic. They need to get those towers down. Yeah, they've not been able to make any moves on other sides of the map. The thing they have done very well, though, is Dragon. 20 minutes, 39 seconds to the respawn there, so just a minute and a half to go. And they've been very good at that. Oh my gosh, Pekka again jumps on here by Diana. But caught out, and every single time he does get caught, it is Reckless that's in there, tries to get the power fist, but it's not enough. Toys goes down, mistake in trouble now. Reckless with the ultimate running, condemns him on the wall. It's a double kill for Reckless. This is so identical to the last game. Reckless now 5-1-2. He did suffer so heavily in the lane against BB, but again, Reckless is picking up the kills and Vayne getting fed. They could have barreled off this. In all honesty, they've got uh, BB so very far away. They've got a ton of attack speed onto Vayne. And Zyra's got plants. Zyra's so good at killing Baron. But they're going to take the safe route instead. They have they sent Pekka back to heal. They pick up the turret because they can do whatever they want on the map right now. Until the respawns come in, they can do whatever they want. And instead of Baron, they're going to instead choose two middle turrets. And the comeback Baron, it's not an option here. Everyone's healthy. Fnatic can stop a Baron, uh, a Baron comeback. 
Fnatic really doing a job here. Can they turn things around? Stanley goes aggressive, gets condemned straight against the wall, and then hooked back in. Not sure if they wanted it. The damage very strong towards Stanley, but Fnatic backing away from this one. They realized that BB is back. They didn't have PK in that fight. It was going to be a straight 4v5, not something they wanted. PK picks up the blue buff in the meantime, and Fnatic collect their thoughts. Yeah, and they're, they're still perfectly fine here, and especially with knocking Stanley that low, they know TPA doesn't have a lot of moves they can make on the map. He's one of their biggest uh, you know, earners of gold income here. He's a really, really big deal on the matchups overall. 6,000 gold of the 6,000 gold in the top lane. Uh, you know, he, he's one of those big factors, and, and so they, they need him around at all times. And you know, the big gold difference used to be between the AD carries. BB was so far ahead of Reckless, but Reckless picking up those kills definitely got himself back in there. Taipei Assassins now heading in. Are they going to push towards this? They haven't got Stanley with them at the moment, so they've got to be careful they don't get hooked out or anything. Immediately N-rated coming in there. I'm hearing so much noise from the two teams, as well as the fans here as well. Don't forget. You fans! Guys have, fans, they're going in towards the dragon. It's going to be a dragon fight freak. All right, but this is something that Fnatic can absolutely stop and turn the game on this. So Cyanide moves his way in there. He's going to come through, tries to go for it, feasts oh, it down. Man. Cyanide gets the kill. Does manage to come around. Toys react, so the hook comes out. It's not enough. Stanley with the Counter-Strike. As Counter-Strike already used as well. They're turning on towards Lil Balls. Lil Balls is split targeted very much here. Toys is the target. They're going to try and get the Power Fist on towards Toys. Power Fist on Toys. Ultimate use. Toys goes down. Now Reckless picks up one. Can he get a second? He's on towards Lil Balls. Lil Balls goes down for Cyanide. That's two kills. They back away again. They picked up the Dragon. Advantage is turning every single time and for the first time in the game, Fnatic have the gold lead. And they, they again, they could Baron here, but they're playing so safely. They send Reckless to the right-hand side, tell them to pick up minion kills. Fnatic, the rest of them, towards the mid lane. They've got a very, very low second mid turret. They should be able to pick that one up without much difficulty at all. Both Mistake and BB are back in base. Stanley, as manly as you are, you cannot 1v3. This will be Fnatic picking up the second turret. Stanley is manly, but not at the moment. He hasn't got that Trinity Force, of course. He hasn't got the damage. He's got... It's pretty tanky, but he hasn't got that ability to just leap in there. The Trinity Force Guardian Angels we're so used to seeing. What's he building towards? Looks like it is going to be the Trinity Force in there. Had to get the Negatron Cloak in early as well, because PK is starting to do some serious damage. So it, he started out with just like resist to survive everything. He's, he's starting on it now a little bit. The fact that he has a Negatron Cloak means it's either like wit's end for like attack speed for the ultimate, or it's, it's the first piece of oh, Guardian the hook, Angel. The hook on the blue. Is it going to be enough to finish it off? You can see PK in there. They've got to be careful. The rest of the team doesn't dive in. Toys dives on towards N-rated. N-rated taking down very low, but they can see the the ultimate comes out from PK. Oh. Oh, true shot barrage flashes across. And that's BB picking up a kill, makes him fight for zero. And now they're looking to push towards the Baron here, Freak. Yeah, they've collapsed on it immediately. They know they have great map position here. No ult from Xpeka. Reckless no. was down the bottom. Yeah, and, and, and Cyanide, though, he's one of the best guys have ever seen steel buffs well you've seen it twice now for him and mistakes so low i don't think they can actually take baron but so has it hurt here they're turning it around is he going to survive just long enough reckless is about to join the fight that's why Fnatic sticking around and here is reckless with the ultimate getting in towards him it's stanley seems to be the target bb taking down very low stanley stanley gets dropped there they're straight on towards bb bb kiting on towards so as is it enough reckless one more shot there it is the double kill for reckless turns on towards lil balls lil balls at the blue buff they do back away and again keep hold of their advantages. Fnatic winning every team fight back to back. Oh man, but they still refuse, refuse, refuse to kill Baron. Every single team fight. Guys, let's go mid. They've got two turrets in the top lane, two turrets in the bottom lane, whatever they want. Nuh-uh, mid lane. That's always where Fnatic is going here. They are, they are not taking risks here. It, it's like the game plan. They are so confident in their ability to team fight that when they get a kill, they take the safest advantage possible wow. and then group back up. There it is. The Infinity Edge now on Vayne, along with the Phantom Dancer, the damage is there. 8-1-13, the 16-year-old Fnatic Reckless standing in, cannot play in Season 3, unfortunately, because he is too young for Fnatic. That's if Fnatic make it to Season 3, of course. Of course. Well, they certainly try for the qualifiers. They've made it to the European Regional. They're, they're looking good so far. Let's, let's, let's put it that way. So any AD carries out there thinking that you are good enough, this is what you're up against. Yeah, you are luck. up against Reckless, who is currently beating out the yep. world champions, Taipei Assassins, BB, who really, honestly, pretty much was crowned king of all when he was at uh, <laughs> season two. Oh, Reckless has been caught out of position just as I sing his praises, but he has to use his ultimate. Oh, is it going to be enough? He sword the ultimate land from Toys, but he just gets away. Oh, true shot like for us coming across as well. BB trying to snipe him off with the angles, but not enough. And Reckless lives to fight another day.
Well, the ult from Toys was down. He used it to initiate to get into range to fight that one, to get the Moonfall, uh, which meant that he didn't have the reset there later on. So you have to kind of choose one as Diana. Do you want to go for pure DPS and ult after every Crescent Strike, um, or do you simply wait around uh, or, or do you sorry, just jump in there with the ultimate and then not get the cooldown back again? So something I haven't actually noticed is whether Soaz has been using the ultimate on Reckless. I would assume so. He's certainly so, so strong now. He seems to be the primary target you'd use it on. There's not been a lot of situations where he's needed it ultimately. That The, the Yorick clone pre-revive is not all that strong, really. Um, it, it's, it's only actually after you, you actually revive the champion and, and the player retains control of, of that character that it really gains all the abilities and deals full damage and things like that. So I, I think he's using it more as a reaction tool. Um, and instead, as soon as uh, Rockless gets low, he'll revive him back up. So Fnatic currently coming back. Looking strong in this game. They've built themselves up a 4,000 gold lead from being behind 3,000 gold. So have they turned the corner? Have they picked up in here at the IPL 5 in Las Vegas? Are they going to beat out the world champions? The only team to do it since God only knows when, because Taipei Assassins have not, not lost for a long time. World League did it back in China in a couple of, uh, of matches and tournaments. Sure match. Uh, yeah, well, you know, even back in the day, so but Soas now oh, getting caught so out here. Completely caught out of position. He tries to use the ultimate. There goes BB with the True Shot Barrage. He's picking, sniping people off the map there right now, and that means Taipei Assassins are going to push on towards his turret. Yes, yeah, so you're seeing this, these battles go back and forth. They've got the numbers to get a lot of turret pressure here. And again, there's not a lot of long-range tools here from Fnatic. And honestly, if I'm them, I'm afraid to Blitzcrank hook. Oh! BB, nice arcane shift, getting himself back out there. But honestly, if I'm Fnatic, getting a hook onto a turret is not the easiest thing. If, whether it's Little Balls or Stanley are the main two, you're not going to get a lot out of that just because you're starting to fight a, a, a four on five. And that's always really, really, really risky. I don't know, as, as Fnatic, like, the fact that they're still running around the map as just four is, is so brazen of them. Oh, they're passing across a ward there, and the hook on towards Stanley. Immediately, N-Rated gets in there, has got the rupture down, hasn't used the power fist just yet. There he goes, Reckless picks up another kill, turns it on towards Toys, PK backs away. They're going to try and counteract from this fight because BB sniping through the side of that trees. Back up pops Zonius for not much reason. That fight, though, was a lesson in just... In, in, in the lesson of just use your cooldowns. They all just pressed the buttons, Ooh. everyone used their ultimates, and it was enough damage to pick up the kill on Stanley. This five on four, even with no ults, does not matter, because Reckless, of course, is vain, doesn't need an ult to do well, and is gonna keep pushing forward here. So Reckless pushing in with that Phantom Dancer and Infinity Edge. He's just gonna hammer away on that turret. You can see the turret's just going down further and further. Type by Assassin's desperately trying to hook it out here. N-Rated missing the hook. Fnatic just gonna back away. They're happy with that one advantage they gain. And they immediately turn it around towards the dragon. Turn and burn Cyanide, walking straight past that ward. He is going to take it down. It's a ward death, ladies and gentlemen. Fnatic are fighting right now. The thing is, that I don't think they need to bait around a dragon. Oh, there we go. Baby actually checks it out right there with the True Shot Barrage. Sees that Fnatic has not started on it yet. But of course, everyone kind of read that situation as, hey guys, dragon's up. We should make sure you know we know what's going on. Um, I think TPA still can't go in to stop them. They're actually leaving two from Fnatic in the mid lane as the other three take that down. Reckless getting the kill credit there. 34 minute respawn on Dragon. Baron, of course, still up on the map. The Fnatic, they've got complete control right now. Absolute complete control. I mean, this is just a turnaround. And again, it's unrated. He's got those boots of mobility. He's flashing in. He's landing the hooks on the primary targets the AP carry, the AD carry, or even Stanley. They're quite happy to grab Stanley in now. He's still not manly enough to be able to survive a simple hook, and everybody can. Mm -hmm. Just diving on him. And he's now picked up Shrelia's Reverie, which will help him get out quite a bit better or help the team initiate on, on the back of someone getting hooked. And then it's actually really, really important. He's building Tanky because they just honestly need a tank here. And that's the one thing I think really separates him from a lot of other players. We've seen Jax have bad lanes over and over and over again. And he's the first player I've seen say, screw it, I can't afford Triforce, I need to get Tanky. I, I like that choice from Stanley. I think it's the right build here. It's the right build, and we've seen what do, you, what do you make of it? Trinity Force and Bloodthirst. And not a lot of hit points in there for BB. Just realizing that he can stay out of the distance. He can stay a long way away from the fight. Just keeps on queuing. Exactly. He's got only one death there. He's done a very, very good job of staying safe. And he's just trying to buy as much damage as possible. The Trinity Force there as well really helps him, uh, you know, kite and stay away from everyone else. And honestly, Fnatic's not diving BB whatsoever. He doesn't necessarily need the phage kiting. Um, it, you know, that, that kind of item, it, it really helps you snowball a lane uh, or snowball a fight forward um, or, or get away if you're the one getting pushed on. I, I almost would have preferred, like, I hedge uh, Phantom Dancer for me, honestly. 
Fnatic trying to actually pins the move on towards Taipei Assassins here. You can see them coming around the side there. They do get the slowdown. BB seems to be the target, but Fnatic actually forcing the fight. They're saying, fine, you're going to be there. We're going to go to your open inhibitor. You're going to have to come up the back of us and fight. We are ready and waiting for it. You can see the tanky front line. So has sat there. The roots coming out from PK, just keeping them at bay. Lil Moore's having to use as much as he can. There we go. Inhibitor down. So now Fnatic are going to turn on towards Taipei Assassins. They have to back away from this one. And Rating's looking to see if he can land any of those hooks. Will he go for the power fist? Oh, Stanley just leap striking away, avoiding the hook there. And just like a hit and run in the night, Fnatic take away the inhibitor. Now they're turning on towards it. So as does manage to land a bunch of ghouls on towards one. Mistake. Stanley getting caught. Stanley gets ruptured. It's going to be enough to go for it. They're going to turn it around. Trishop Barrage hitting the hole of Fnatic. Is it going to be enough? Toys gets around of there. Lulu Ultimate comes down. n rated does go down. They do manage to get one. But is it enough? Toys getting dropped. Reckless in there. Reckless picks up a double kill. Manages to go for BB. BB going to get dropped. That's a triple kill. Goes towards Mistake. Can he be in the quadrant kill? No, no, he can't. So as gets it. It doesn't matter. It's an ace. Fnatic are piling through the middle. Have they got enough to take down the tie? Pay Assassins here at the IPL 5. Yes, they do. The Nexus turrets are going to burn. Fnatic have 2 0 Taipei Assassins. Unbelievable. What a result. Uh, and as the turrets fall down, can you just believe that? Who would have predicted? I mean, who would have predicted Fnatic over Zebu Blades? Fnatic 2 0 over Taipei Assassins, but they have done it. They are in the top six now, and there you go. They are hugging it out on screen. An amazing, amazing job by the Europeans from Fnatic Raid Call.